The Southall Summer 23 release is just around the corner and the release notes have arrived as an early gift. This release is packed with plenty of great new features. Hi, I'm Andrew Cook, technical instructor at southallsbend.com and our mission is to help you advance your Southall's career. Subscribe to our YouTube channel below and check out our extensive resources on southallsbend.com. You can find everything you need to know about how to prepare and when your instance will get upgraded at the link in the comments. For now, let's dive into the most exciting features and updates for developers of the Southall Summer 23 release. This has been in beta for a while, but as of Summer 23, the ability to quickly create full sandboxes is generally available for eligible Hyperforce instances. The quick create technology enhances the speed at which full sandboxes are created or refreshed allowing teams to focus more time on developing and testing solutions and less time on waiting for sandboxes to be built. Scow Center provides self-service and near real-time access to performance metrics. You can diagnose root causes and act on Scow issues earlier in your development cycle, along with improving the scalability of your Salesforce implementation. You can identify issues with performance or scale, launch analysis to troubleshoot errors, and retrieve customized insights and recommendations. To enable Scale Center in sandboxes and in production on first-party infrastructure and Hyperforce, from Setup, enter Scale Center and then select Scale Center. To get access, contact your program architect or account executive. The Set class now implements the iterable interface, so you can directly iterate over sets. Both sets and lists are iterable allowing for more code reuse. This is a really exciting change and something that has been requested on the Idea Exchange since 2014. Here is an example using the string.join method with a set, which was previously unsupported because set didn't implement iterable. Previously, all instances received eligible event log files automatically. This update adds a new preference setting in the event monitoring settings page where you select whether or not to generate and receive event log files. Async Sockel is a method for running Sockel queries when you can't wait for immediate results. These queries are run in the background over Salesforce big object data. Async Sockel provides a convenient way to query large amounts of data stored in Salesforce. It is implemented as a RESTful API that enables you to run queries in the familiar syntax of Sockle. Because of its asynchronous operation, you can subset, join, and create more complex queries and not be subject to timeout limits. This feature is being retired in the Summer 23 release. If you are using async Sockle queries, you will need to replace them with bulk API and batch Apex. As per the timeline, and just like with workflow rules, you can no longer create new process builders. Interestingly, unlike with workflow rules, you cannot clone an existing process builder as a new process. You can still activate, deactivate, and edit your existing process builder processes and continue to create automations in Flow Builder. There has been a behavior change to the REST URIs. JSON and XML can no longer be appended directly to REST URIs to specify content type. Although API versions 57 and earlier still support this functionality, transition away from this syntax before these versions aren't available. Instead, to specify the content type to return for REST requests, use the HTTP accept header. There have been a number of changes to the metadata API in this release, from the retirement of the service field data type metadata type to the various new analytics and customized features, there really are lots of exciting enhancements coming in Summer 23. My personal favorite is the ability to use the new permission set groups field on the existing delegate group metadata type, allowing delegated admins to manage permission set group assignments. A close second is the new user access policies enabled field on the existing user management settings metadata type, giving the ability to enable user access policies, which is currently in beta. In the Summer 23 release, there are a few changes to Lightning Web Components. The Lightning Card and Lightning Tree Grid Components have new attributes. The Lightning Icon Component has some changes to meet WCAG 2.1 accessibility standards, and the heading tags for some components now have an area level attribute which can be used to differentiate heading levels for area compliant screen readers. As of Summer 23, this feature is now generally available, giving the ability to transfer ownership of an unlocked package or second generation managed package from one dev hub org to another. A transfer can occur internally between two dev hub orgs that you own, or you can transfer a package externally to another Salesforce customer, Salesforce partner, 
or ISV. This change provides a way to sell an unlocked or second generation managed package. To initiate a package transfer, you need to log a case with either Salesforce Partner Support or Salesforce Customer Support due to the complex nature of this procedure. That's it for our rundown of the best Salesforce Summer 23 release features for developers. What other new features have you spotted? Let us know in the comments below.